Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, gentlemen, for your testimony. Mr. Kennedy, if I referred to controlled technology, uh, would, you, would you understand that term? Uh, if you could explain just a little bit. Well, it's important technology, important to the nation's commerce and the nation's defense. Um, do, do we have university students, citizens of foreign countries, China, for example, in our universities that have access to controlled technology? Well, there's laws governing uh, grants to, f to uh, federal grants to universities. And uh, as far as I understand, in certain, in, in many circumstances, you're, uh, there's supposed to be restrictions to access to those technologies in the lab. Um, uh, and I think it's I called a deemed export yes, license. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but if you have a university student who's just in the lab, uh, just present, uh, a deemed export license is not required. Is that not the case? That's correct. Do, do uh, are, are there uh, foreign university students, university students in, in, in our universities from foreign countries like China that are stealing our technology, controlled technology? Well, there's 369,000 students from China in American universities. It's the most in the world, isn't it? Yes, by far. It's, uh, you know, at least half. And many of them are in the sciences, are they not? That's right, in, in science technology. And many yeah. of them are in labs that are uh, developing controlled technology, are they not? But as long as they're just there observing, we don't require a deemed export license, do we? Do you know, Mr. Wolf? Well, it's actually the area of law used to be responsible for, and the laws apply equally whether you're a student or in a university uh, with non-public technical information that's controlled or in a company. And uh, a release of technology to that student that's not in the public domain yeah, but requires if a just license there, the same way as just, exporting they're just to, in the lab, Yes, <clears throat> it's not considered a release, is it? No, it actually is. Uh, uh, the revealing of information in any context, orally or visually, is a controlled event, uh, assuming it's not public and on the internet so, available so to you're, anybody. So you're telling me that if a student is merely in the lab, our universities are not getting deemed expert licenses? The act of revealing to a foreign person in a university setting or any other setting is a controlled event with controlled technology. I, I don't agree with you. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I think the, the deemed export license is being applied very narrowly. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of universities that are not, uh, not obtaining them. And I've got a bill to do something about that to tighten that up. Okay. You see any problems with that legislation? I was unaware of it till just now, but I'd be happy to look at it and discuss it with you and provide however much help I could. All right, let me ask you this, gentlemen. Um, the, uh, the law, obviously, in China is underdeveloped and many law firms are underdeveloped. Uh, but, but we have seen a, a growing occurrence of foreign law firms, law firms foreign to China, who are affiliating with Chinese law firms. Are they covered by CFIUS? If they're an American law firm affiliating with a Chinese law firm? If it doesn't involve an investment in a U.S. business, then no. Um, well, the reason we're in, we, we, uh, we have CFIUS is to keep China and other countries, I don't mean to pick on China, from taking our technology, correct? And other things, yes. Right. Um, well, if, if, if an American law firm is affiliating with, let's say, a Chinese law firm, and that Chinese law firm has access through the American law firm to American technology, why doesn't CFIUS cover it? Well, the export control rules would prohibit the release of control technology by a lawyer. not law firms. Actually, it does. It applies to anybody moving information across a the border. There isn't an exclusion for a lawyer to provide control technology. Well, when Denton's, Denton's is now the largest law firm in the world. They just gobbled up an Atlanta firm. Uh, Denton's merged, I, I don't think you can merge in China, but affiliated with a large Chinese law firm. They didn't get an ex deemed export license. 
I don't know anything about that, but it would depend upon whether control technology was being provided to a foreign person. I, I'm not, it's not being provided. I'm saying yeah. that, that the foreign law firm, foreign to the United States, a Chinese law firm that has access to the data of the law firm can access the American technology. Okay. Would CFIUS cover, is, is CFIUS being applied to that? Well, CFIUS is focused on the investment and the export control is focused that. on the tech transfer. I get transfer. that, but before so. the merger between the American law firm and the Chinese law firm, is the American law firm coming to CFIUS and saying, is this okay? Uh, probably not. I would love to discuss this more with you. It's a new fact pattern to me that I've not thought about until today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay.